Hey everyone, this is Real Golfers Talk, and I am Jason. I am your host for today. This is round two coverage of the Greenbrier. I'm excited to get into this. I'm excited to talk about it because we had more consistent play today. It was better. It was more efficient. It wasn't what the hell was going on like it was yesterday. It was better. It was better. So because of that, I'm happy to get back into this. I'm happy to get into this. We'll start with Sebastian Munoz. 12 under, shot 67, 3 under par. It's phenomenal golf. You shoot a 61, 9 under par, and then you come back with a 3 under par. That's fantastic. You lead by 3 now. He's leading by 3. That's phenomenal golf for him to be able to do that. That, that, is, that is being able to handle the pressure. Now, again, he, he went out late on Thursday, came out early Friday. And, you know, obviously you still have the momentum going. We'll see how he does having to wait all that time now because he's in the final group on Saturday. We'll be able to see now how the pressure affects him being in the final group, knowing that he has a lead going into the weekend, going into moving day. We'll get to find that out. But for him so far, really good golf, consistent golf. I will say it's consistent because he did not hurt himself, obviously. He actually gained a stroke on the field. From second play, he was two shots ahead yesterday. Now he's three, so he gained a shot. So you can't be mad about it. You play, you shoot 67s the rest of this tournament. You're going to have a great chance to win after that 61. So for him, hopefully he can keep his composure going into the weekend, round three and round four. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see that. Um, anytime you can see a young kid, you know, compose himself or see what happens, what's that's how you're going to learn. If you want to learn how to win, you got to learn how to deal with pressure. And now he's going to get to learn what it's like to be in this kind of pressure. So that's something exciting to watch. As we look down, three shots, we go two guys are at nine under par. We got Hudson Swafford who shot 66, four under par. The day before, shot five under. So Hudson Swafford, very consistent golf. Hudson Swafford is one. Younger guy, but he can win. Obviously, he can win. He's won before. Um, but that's consistent golf. That's what I like about that. It's consistent. It's not, oh, this and that, you know, shoot 72 and then shoot 62. You know, he, he shot really well to shoot 66 and 65. I mean, those are great numbers, and we're going to look at that and go, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's just awesome. It's consistent. So we expect to see that all weekend. He's going to put himself in a great chance to win if he doesn't win. So, He's looking really good right now. And then you got Ben Martin at 9-under. Shoot 67, 3-under par. So, you know, 6-under, then 3-under. But he had a little bit of struggles today. But, again, Ben Martin knows how to win. He's won before. He's he's one of those, you know, journeyman-type guys that's been out there. He understands the game of golf. So it'll be interesting to see if he can do it. Again, top five finish last week. Comes back this week playing well. Tied for second. I mean, you gotta you got to appreciate a guy that has his game right now. Because he can't have it every week. But he has it right now. Had it last week. Had it this week so far. We'll see what he does. Then you got Davis Love who shot the 7-under, which was 53 years old. Phenomenal. Shoots 1-under. Had some struggles today. But again, still managed a 1-under round. Puts himself four shots back. Still in phenomenal position to do something. And a guy at his age that doesn't play all the time and all this, that, that's that's really good for him. And, and, and he, he's had a great career. So... Uh, that's really good. But again, you know, these guys aren't faltering. These guys that were there, you know, Martin, like I said, was, was six under par yesterday. Shoots three under today. Munoz was nine under par. He shoots three under a day. Davis Love was seven under. Shoots one under a day. They didn't hurt themselves. And that's the biggest key. Don't hurt yourself when you're doing going into Friday, when you get a chance to make the cut and see what happens on moving day. Don't put yourself in a bad position. Take each shot as it is, each hole and just get yourself there. And we saw more consistent golf from these guys that were on the leaderboard than faltering, which was good because you don't want to see guys go way up here and then fall way back. It's just bad for their confidence. Then you got Dan Lee, which was the expected, shot two under. He's eight under par as well. Again, the guy we thought was going to be there one, two years ago, he can easily win. So, I mean, that, and I picked him as one of my top five. So, again, to see him eight under, that's good stuff. That That's what you want to see. You want to see this guy at 800 par. And then Russell Henley comes out, shoots 64, 600 par. He was 2 under, and then he goes to 800 par because he shoots 64. That's why I love Russell. I like him. He's a good player. And you know why? Because he can shoot low numbers. He can shoot a 64. That's why he puts himself in a position. I don't know what he's going to do tomorrow. I don't know what he's going to do on the weekend. I don't know what he's going to do Sunday. But, again, puts himself four shots back 
after having a great round of golf. 64 is a great round of golf. And now look at him. He's right there. He's right there. Can win this tournament. Guys won, won the Shell Houston Open. It's phenomenal. It's a good thing to see these guys putting themselves in a position. Russell Hanley's always been a guy that I thought should win more and to be on the leaderboard more just because he has the game to do it. So let's see what happens this week with him. And then Nick Taylor, again, a guy that's younger. He's been playing well this season, especially over the last month, month and a half. And he's seven under now and he shoots one under par today. So again, he didn't take a step back. Yeah, he didn't shoot six under, but he didn't hurt himself. He's still in good position, five shots back. Then he got Jamie Lovemark, who posted a 64 as well. Another guy that was one under par. Then he comes to shoot six under. It's just another guy that's posting a good score and puts himself in position that just that that's not his forte. He's not he's not a guy who's had a lead or anything like that. But look at him on the leaderboard now. Gives himself a chance on moving day to post a good number and maybe he gets into the final group. These guys are doing some things that we haven't seen. And can they take it into the weekend? That's what's going to be entertaining. Can they take it into the weekend? That'll be fun to watch. And you got a couple other notables. Kelly Kraft shoots 66. He's seven under par. You know, that's really good. And then and then Xander Choufle, Uh He shoots one under. Um, now he's seven under. Shoots 69. So, again, another guy that didn't hurt himself. Young player out of San Diego. You know, that's phenomenal. Again, you don't want to bite yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. Don't do it. Just play decent golf. You don't have it that day. Get out with a decent score. 69 is a good score. So don't walk away from that. So I really liked what I saw out of these guys that haven't really been there before or it's been a long time. They really showed us something uh, in round two that you know they can make a run and win this. And again, we won't know until the pressure is on for the weekend, but so far, I'm really liking what I've seen out of these guys. And then for the notable reasons of Bubba Watson, he shoots three under, he shoots the 67, he's four and a part for the tournament. And he's not out of it by any stretch. I mean, eight shots, but again, if the pressure's on and they feel it, they can come back a little bit. And Bubba Watson, you know, with his length and everything, if he can just get that putter working <laughs> like the way it should work, he just has no putting stroke. God, I hope he can figure that out one day. But once he can get that to a level where it's consistent, if he ever can, then, I mean, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But he has the length to, to put himself with a short wedge, and he has the ability to put the ball close to the hole. And if he can do that, then he can make a run. He's won, obviously, two majors, two green jackets. So, you know, he has the ability to win. And then Mickelson kind of stuck, took a step back, 72-2 over. He's one under par. So he made the cut, but, you know, what's he going to do round three? Probably doesn't have a good chance to win, but... He made the cut for the first time he had missed the cut the each times that he's played before so at least it's good that he made the cut give him some more playing time and then you know coming into the the u.s open i mean that's going to be the biggest thing for him it's not winning here obviously you want to win but you just want to get yourself into playing condition after missing that much time to where when you go to the open you give yourself a great chance him being a former champion of the open championship it, it's good for him to just get and play, especially at his age, you want to get yourself, took the time off, got some rest, but now you want to get yourself back into playing and, and getting that routine in. So when you go there, you're not going to struggle. So good for him. But it was a good first round of golf. It's a good first round of golf, and, and I appreciated it. So uh, hopefully we'll see the same at a moving day. Um, but you never know. I mean, there's so many surprises in golf. I mean, anything can happen. We've seen that before. I mean, Jesus. But uh, I need a beer. Holy crap because this next topic it pisses me off okay I gotta tell you it pisses me off because I don't understand right I'm an amateur I've shot a 71 that's my best score on a par 72 one under par that's that's great for me right great could I do it now no I'm like 88 90 right now if I wouldn't play I don't play every day like I used to but holy crap when I see this I have to call it out because they, these guys practice all the time Okay, and it wasn't even a pressure situation. This is what gets me. I saw I, I mentioned this a couple weeks back with Rory McRoy. Grand Delet chunks a wedge, and it was it wasn't even close. Like Rory McRoy missed by like 20 yards. This guy hit the ball 15 yards at best in front of him. I mean, he hit the dirt probably six inches behind the ball. You strike the ball well. You're a pro player. How do you chunk a ball so bad that it only goes like 15 
fucking yards in front of you. That's fucking pathetic. I mean, Grand Delay, you played great golf. What the fuck was that, man? You can't fucking do that. Holy shit. I can't even remember the last time I chunked a ball that fucking bad. That's terrible. That should never fucking happen. Ever. Fuck. These guys with this shit. I mean, who does that? I mean, what's the last time? I've seen bad shots. I've seen terrible fucking shots. But 15 yards in front of you? You're a professional. Fuck me, man. I don't even know what that fucking means. Don't play golf for like two weeks and just hit the fucking wedge so you never chunk it again. That's that's a disaster. How much, I mean, how much turf did you take to even advance it that far? You must have dug a fucking gopher hole to get the ball to even advance that far. Anyways. Oh, anyways, sorry guys. I, it just, it, it, you can't, I mean, it's laughable. But it shouldn't be laughable. I mean, we shouldn't laugh at that. But it's it's fucking hilarious. But it's it's sad at the same time. So, Grand Delay, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Please. For the sanity of me, don't ever fucking do that again. But, uh, anyways. Now you gotta drink more. Mm. Whew. All right, guys. But uh, that's it. That's round two. We'll get into round three coverage tomorrow. I appreciate all the support and all the watch. Please leave comments. Give me some feedback. Any topics you guys want to have, please let me know. I'm Jason. This is World Governors Talk. See you guys next time.